tonight is part two of our semi-slav. This is the complete semi-slav. So we're uh, doing a multi-part series and kind of as I expected, you know, we're doing the Moran. I thought maybe we could cover all of the modern lines in today's lecture. Nope, it's gonna be uh, two parts. So we're just gonna be going over sort of the side lines in the modern Moran before we come on to the main line, which we'll have to do next week. Um, so we'll remind ourselves of the position. So we're just going to catch up to what we started with last week. So we get a Slav, and this triangle means we got the semi-Slav now. And at this part of the lecture, uh, we're only looking at the move E3. That's where we are. And after the logical developing move, we're looking at the move bishop to d3, uh, which allows black to take and play the move b5. And yesterday, we looked at the moves bishop to b3 and bishop to e2. But this week, we're going to look at, at the main line still. Go away. I'm getting attacked. Um, maybe. I might be going crazy, but you can see it. That means they might see it at home, too. It was pretty big. Um, it was over there, too. All right, so we're getting attacked, but that's fine. And last week, we looked at a6, which does allow the Blumenfeld variation that we went into. And OK, some people don't want to allow that with black. But today, we're going to look at the more modern move, bishop to b7. And uh, as Claudio here in the audience did point out, it was uh, an idea that Larson had. So Larson was uh, the pioneer of this move. And one of the points is, well, uh, OK, obviously, when we played a6, the point was to play c5. And c5 still is the break that we want to play, because then our, our bishop would be really nice on this diagonal. So we can try to do this without playing the move a6. For example, we could play b4, kick the knight away, and then play c5. And we wouldn't have to waste any time with our pawn move here on the flank. So that's what you're trying to achieve in this variation. And there's uh, actually three moves that we're going to look at in this position. If you remember the general rule for these kinds of positions, um, that I sort of mentioned last week. If they play on the side, they play a pawn move to try to play c5 next. In general, the best way is to you know, react in the center. They play on the flank, you play in the center. Um, so this would be the, the typical response to a6. And if you know, they develop a piece, in general, in these types of positions, the main move is going to be to castle, which is indeed the main line, and we'll see that next week. However, I do want to take a look at the move e4 which, OK, is a very playable move, but it's not supposed to give white a theoretical advantage. And also, we want to look at a move tonight that's unique to the bishop b7 line, which is the move a3, just with the simple idea of playing b4 and trying to prevent you from playing c5 forever. OK, this is, uh, OK, that, that doesn't work in any lines where we play a6, because after a3, we would just simply play c5. So a3 is an interesting attempt to try to take advantage of this move order by black. Um, all right, we'll start, however, with the move e4. This is where we'll begin our journey tonight. And uh, OK, so we want to, again, we're trying to play the move c5. So we want to play a move like b4. Um, and then after they move, we're going to play c5. Playing a move like a6 with the idea of playing c5 is actually a bit too slow in this position. Because here now, white has the move e5, and we'll just see sort of the danger you can get into if you play a little inaccurately, even early on as black. And if you go to d5, very nice looking square, we can take. And you'll notice now that this bishop is not a, a very happy guy. He's, you know, you got to do some work to get him out of here. And White actually has two interesting plans here. So we'll just, I just do want to show one really quick miniature that happened in this line. I, I will just mention first that the main line is to castle. And OK, White's plans include just playing a3 before. This is still an idea. Um, you can also play moves like bishop d2, queen e1, and try to trade for the dark squared bishop. We know how important this guy is, especially when black is trying to defend. So that's one of the other plans that he might have. Um, also, the untested computer plan of just queen d2 followed by b4, uh, you know, very computer-like. But that's OK. If you're a stockfish, that's your preference. Um, 
But I do want to mention also a very interesting move, just to give you an idea of how dangerous this actually can get. In this position, there's also this interesting, unique move, knight to g5, which is a, a very aggressive move. And I want to show a very quick game, Joseph Rukavina versus Jerry Hartung from 2010. And this game ended very quickly. Uh, so Black took this opportunity to toss in this check. You don't like it? What, would, what did you want to play? Anything else? Do you have a suggestion? <laughs> you don't have to like it, but it's, it's a good move. Because, okay. I feel like you need a defender. For you need a defender? Okay, so do you just want to play like here or something? Maybe. Maybe. Um, so I assume I can play like h4 or f4. All I know is we can find like these positions. Like it's black because it feels like come under pressure very quickly. Yeah, right. And yeah, just you can come under pressure really quickly. And a problem in a line like this too is um, it's always going to be difficult even to play like f6, even if you've castled, got your bishop out. Playing f6 is always hard because with your bishop over here, you're not even defending e6 as much. So even if you get the bishop out and you play castle and play f6, um, you still might have some weaknesses to worry about. Um, yeah, there's going to be all sorts of sacrifices looming in this position. And, and we're going to see that in the game. I mean, he got into trouble immediately. Okay, but he tossed this check in, which is, the audience doesn't like it. Um, but okay, this part is fine. Okay, you misplaced my king. Fine. And now h6 which might already be a mistake. <laughs> Do you see the attack coming? Yeah, bishop's just going to sack up, take that pawn. Bishop is going to take a pawn? Eventually. Eventually. Okay, well, he played queen h5. Yeah. Okay, seems sensible enough. So there's a pin, so if I take here, you'll take my rook. You're attacking f7. Black decided, okay, I'll protect. Queen e7, what's the problem? And so I'll ask the class. What's the problem? Yeah, knight f7. Um, in our, okay, so now the game's over. Uh, the point is, if you take back, hopefully we see bishop to g6, winning the queen. Um, so in the game, he instead castled, which doesn't help very much, because queen g6, and oh, I mean, all roads lead to mate here. So. Um, yeah, this, this didn't quite work out. This attack was way too fast. So there's even some really aggressive ideas. But the point is, you don't want to play a move in this position you know, way too casual, a move like a6, because if this guy does end up getting trapped, like white can get a, a huge monster, a monster attack right from the beginning if this guy gets trapped behind all these pawns and you never get to play the move c5. Uh, so that's the lesson. So instead, the move b4, this is the main move. And white almost always moves his knight to where it's looking at the c5 square. And black plays c5. OK. So. What did you say? What's that? After oh, yeah. So the knight goes here. Right. So it's, it's trying to get control over the c5 square. Because okay. that's where black is trying to play. He wants to play c5 so that the pawn is out of the way of the bishop. Gotcha. So that's you know, sort of the strategic fight here is over whether or not you can play c5. And indeed, that's what black always plays in this position. Um, c5, now the bishop is uh, you, on a nice open diagonal. And also, we're attacking this pawn. So we'll look at just the next two moves. OK, e5, very typical of this position. And the knight goes to the middle, d5. Um, and so again, kind of like we're going to see in all these types of positions, this pawn on e5 can be a, a real strength early on. You know, if you're, a lot of these attacks. It's a really important pawn because neither of my knights can go to f6 because you got that pawn there. And OK, obviously, as black, you're hoping in an end game, that'll actually turn out to be a weakness. You're hoping eventually I start taking here, and you know, I attack your center, and your center crumbles. And if you're, you know, your center falls apart, then I'm going to be doing pretty good as black. Um, and there's actually two plans here for white. So what black should do depends on what uh, white decides to do here. So there's, there's two plans. OK, the most principled continuation is just a castle. So we'll come back and, and we'll look at that. But the other idea is to take twice on c5. And one of the points 
although we'll see it's not as dangerous as it may seem at first, is if we get all these pieces out of the way, we may be able to use this bishop on this diagonal. For example, let's take, and after we do lots of taking here, um, castling again is the main move. But let's look just for a second at bishop to b5, which seems like okay, a very, very good move, right? You're attacking the king. I don't have a good way to block. But you can actually get away with here the move king e7. And we've seen in these positions, that's often where this king wants to go. So notice you're not really worried about a move like bishop to g5, which could be scary. I mean, you'd be forced to play a move like f6. Um, but something like this is not as scary as it may seem. Black here is actually trying to play a move like queen b6, which would attack a couple things. Um, if this move, it depends on where this bishop is and in certain lines. Sometimes it's a double attack. Sometimes you go to b6 and you, the bishop has to move and you can get your rooks into the game pretty quickly. So it's actually not as, as bad as it might seem. Um, and we've seen a lot of games where that's just where the king goes in a lot of these lines. So we're not actually afraid to stay in the center and, and not be able to castle. Um, OK, so instead, white should castle. And uh, now we have to be really careful here with black. If, for example, we castle, which I'm kind of surprised. This position has been played like 100 times, but nobody's ever made this mistake. Yeah, so there's, yeah, there's the Greek gift. Um, when you see this trio of pieces, and I'll draw some pretty arrows that have no instructional value, but they make the picture look better. Uh, just to show you that, OK, when these pieces are lined up like this, very often there is a Greek gift. How are you doing, Orlando? <clears throat> OK, and indeed, here in this position, it just works. Because um, now if you go back anywhere, queen h5, and if here, queen c2, this is, OK, this is the end of the game. Um, so you do have to be worried, you know, so in, this, in these types of positions, black should play a move like h6. This is just a typical move that you want to play in this position, um, which not only can take more control over g5, it also prevents any great gifts that might happen. So now black can castle. Um, OK, and from here, there's actually two plans for white. And so kind of during this lecture, you'll notice it keeps branching off and branching off which is why you know, it's going to take several days to cover all of these lines. Um, but I think all the ideas are generally easy to understand once you, you've started playing these positions. And we're going to look at two moves here for white. Uh, queen e2, which is you know, just a developing move. And also the move knight to d2. And then often you bring a piece, either the knight or the bishop, to e4, depends on uh, what black decides to do. Let's look first at queen e2. OK, queen b6. And OK, we're not even, we're still not worried about this check. And after some move, we'll even voluntarily go to e7. So something like this just doesn't really cause black a whole lot of problems. We'll just show generally, here's how you can develop your pieces. You bring your rooks to the center. The king can castle manually. Something like this is just perfectly fine for black. OK, so you might get a position like this. Um, so sometimes they try to be a little more crafty here as white in this position. And they play knight to d2. Um, and here again, uh, black now has a choice between two moves. And we'll look very briefly at two games from both of these lines, because I know it's, kinda, it's sometimes nice just to see some games in these lines. The most popular move is to castle. OK, very good move. Uh, my personal preference, and I've actually had this position um, at least once in a tournament game, is the move queen to c7. OK, so I'm delaying castling for a while. There's pressure on the e pawn. Uh, after, let's say, we defend our pawn, I want to look at the game Kuzmin Dreyev from St. Petersburg, 2004. And in this game, black just got a very comfortable advantage. And what he wants to do over the next couple of moves is he wants to bring his rook to d8. You'll notice there's you know, lots of potential targets here on the d file. So the rook goes to d8. Then the knight is going to go to e7 in some order. And then the knight will be out of the way of the rook and the bishop. And um, OK, this, they should coordinate pretty well here for black. 
In this game, he decided to start with knight to e7. And after queen to g4, um, we're not worried at all about taking here. So instead, he played rook to d8. Why not? Why not? OK, let's take it. Um, I'll ask in the back of the room, do you know what black would play in this position? Well, kind of with the rook, no? We do push out the queen and mm -hmm. on the, on the... Right, yeah, so we want to go here, and it's you know worse than that. Because um, now my rook and my bishop are coordinating on g2. So something like this would actually be pretty devastating <laughs> uh, for white. Also, I'm on here, so yeah, there's, I don't want to move it either square. Um, so something like this actually would be really, really bad for the white king here. It looks like you're in a lot of trouble. Um, so that's why, so this is not a threat, so that's why he, you know, okay, white didn't take and, and black didn't have to respond. He had time for rook d8. Um, so bishop e4. And one of the problems is, for white, this bishop is so awesome. You know, and just like in that other line where the rook can come to g8, there's lots of coordination against the black king. These bishops are really strong. So white, you know, has an effort here to try to get rid of that bishop. OK, black just calmly played queen to b6. Uh, now we have a threat here on f2. And I'm not really worried about you taking me, because then my queen will go here, and those might be the same similar types of tricks. So he went back. And uh, we'll just go a couple more moves here, just to see that uh, he got a, a very comfortable edge in this game. OK, with, after some reasonable moves here, a position like this occurred. And uh, OK, in this position, we can already start thinking that uh, black might be better, because he's got the D file for his rooks. Um, and so something like this would be just a typical game. I don't, you know, I, I don't show this to show all the theory, but just to give you guys a general idea, um, one of the things in this position is these bishops really are great. Uh, that, well, that bishop, they can crisscross. Um, so these bishops actually are really great. Eh. Boop, there we go. Um, so you know, white has to try to do something to neutralize black's activity. So even black can get a really strong uh, attacking chances in these types of positions. Uh, I do want to briefly, though, too, mention one other game. So let's castle. So not queen to c7. Let's, let's castle here. Um, now the most common move, knight to e4. And we're going to look at the game Gelfand Aronian from Moscow 2009. And again, we're not going to see the whole game, but we're just going to try to see how white got a, a monster position in this game. OK, you're attacking my bishop. But I can sneak into d4. And I'm attacking your e pawn, which is hard to defend. But white now has this move. Knight to d6, attacks the bishop. So black moved the bishop. And now a semi-surprising move was played. There's a discovery here. So white played check. OK, so we take and we trade the bishops. Um, and black played the main move. This is still theory even today, f6. Um, however, now we're going to see in a lot of these lines, one of the problems for black when he plays this way, again, is this e6 pawn. So that's actually a weakness that costs him the game. Um, and just to show you a few more moves, OK, white can take, but he decided to toss in this check first. And now he takes here, OK, something like this. And uh, so it just seems even just positionally, it, it seems pretty good for white because some of these pawns you know, are a little bit loose. Obviously, black still has some decent coordination of his pieces, so it's nothing too dramatic. Um, but he does go on to kind of mess this game up in a second. And now white goes here with the idea of sometimes taking here on h6. And in sort of a strange turn of events, black allowed this. I don't know if how clever he thought he was letting this happen. Like maybe he has some counter trick. But really, there's not. So OK, taking here on h6 was a, a mistake. And black attacked the queen a couple times. But the queen is actually perfectly safe here. We still have time to get rid of our pin. Um, and now 
this move also was a, a mistake. Um, and I'm not actually sure why he didn't play the best move here. White actually has a very strong move here, and it wasn't played in the game. So here I do want to test the audience, I guess. Um, what would you guys play here as white? Yeah, yeah I'm not. Rook C to D1. This looks like a decent move. Um, I guess I'll, I'll take and play bishop E8. D6. <laughs> yeah, I'm on, so I'm on your queen here. Yeah. I am attacking your queen. I intend to take her. Um, oh, you can do better than this. You know, that's just sort of like a normal move, but there's actually already a, a tactic here. And I'm not entirely sure why he didn't see it, because it's a one-move tactic. Um, so you play complicated ones first. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's understandable when they miss you know, super complicated, computer only could find moves, but this seems like simple enough. What do you want to play? Rook E1. OK, and your, your idea is taking my rook. Um, so I can move my queen. Yeah. Can I trick you? Yeah. You want to take here? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who's tricking who in these positions. <laughs> yeah, maybe this didn't work out for me. Um, I don't know, but I can always just I can move my rook, right? Let me move my rook. I don't know. No, I mean this still looks pretty good. This looks pretty good for you. <laughs> Ninety-three though. This is right. Yeah. Now you. Yeah. You do have a lot of threats. Um, so yeah, the queen moved away from protection of the bishop. So now there's this possible threat. And okay, even if you play a move like bishop e8, which maybe is the the best move. Yeah, you can take here. So you take my queen. I take your queen with check. Um, so I'm not entirely sure why he didn't play that in the game. Instead, he played bishop g5, and he won very technically in a long end game where he exploited you know, the e6 pawn as a weakness. And okay, that's, again, that's something that can happen in these lines. If you have to play a move like f6 in certain positions, a lot of the time this e6 pawn can end up being a weakness all the way into the end game. So here, that's, a, that's how this game actually unfolded, and it was 1,000 moves, so we're not going to be looking at it. I bet you saw that. Okay, so let's now come back to this position, and we're going to look at one more idea in tonight's class. Let me just actually check that time. So we're going to look at this position one more time, and we're going to look at now another idea for white, to move a3. And again, the idea is to play b4 and try to prevent black from playing c5. And black can actually choose. He can allow white to play b5. Um, for example, let me play maybe not the best move, but an OK move. Black can choose to allow white to play b5. Or black can decide to play b4 himself. And uh, we'll see that this is actually the main line. So you're trying to play b4, so I play b4 and, and beat you to it. And my next move might be c5. So we'll come back to this. But I do want to look at what happens if we just play a very simple move, although it does look kind of slow, and obviously this does allow white to get the move b4 in. So this might not be the, the best for black. But why don't, why don't you just go ahead and play c5? Yes, yeah, so you can't play c5 immediately in this position because this pawn wouldn't be protected. So if I play here, both things can take here. So I'll take it. Uh, and then you lost a pawn. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and again, it's always hard too with these long series because that was sort of a, a focus in the first <laughs> week, and you come in at week two. It's uh, sometimes tough, but we'll get through it. Okay, so let's just play a6, not the best move, just to see what happens, even if we allow white to play the move b4. Well, now we can play the move a5. 
So it's true we did waste two turns, which might actually be significant. So we'll come back and look for an improvement. But here's how a typical position like this might happen. Um, now we're going to play bishop d6, getting our bishop out. We might play queen to e7. Um, we're going to go after that pawn. And you can get a position like this. OK, this would be the starting point for this line. However, let's try to be a little craftier here as black. And let's say, OK, so knowing that variation, let me play in this position bishop to d8, or d6, sorry. Um, and if you play b4, castling is actually the main move. If you play b4, now I play a5. And I've saved a tempo. And if the same thing happens, already in this position, I can play queen e7. So I have saved a turn. And in a position like this, Black has a, a good move here, knight to d5. And it may seem strange, because after you take, and we take back, um, OK, this may look like it's potentially a, you know, a weak pawn that maybe in 1,000 moves white will take advantage of. But this position is actually known to be pretty good for black. And it's, it's not super obvious how white will ever make significant progress or, or find a way to get an advantage here. Um, and it's actually black who might get a lot of chances on the king side for an attack, because that's I mean, now his pieces are over there and all of white's pieces are on the queen side looking at this pawn. And there's lots of ways that we could potentially gang up on that pawn. Also, this knight will decide which way he wants to go. You know, he can go to either one of these squares. And uh, this is actually thought to be pretty good for black. So this is not something to be worried about, um, which is why, in general, if you play this move order, white instead castles. Um, and this would, so this would be one interesting way to play this position. However, I do want to just get to the, the main point here in this line and look at this move b4. Because these lines are actually very interesting. Uh, there's a lot of potential for, for pawn sacks that can happen in this variation. Um, so al almost everybody plays knight to e4. For a while, when this you know, be, what became a thing, the a3 move, people were taking here. However, this does accelerate black's development. So if castles, c5. And it may seem kind of strange, because the bishop, you, know, you, you would really prefer your bishop to be on this side of the pawn. Um, but this is OK for black. Let's say. If you're white, you're trying to find some way to get an advantage. Well, you've sort of trapped your own bishop out here, so I'm going to go and I'm going to get it. But now we can play the move a5. And so when you take this, I can take back with my a pawn. And when you take with the rook, I can take back with my queen. And this is very fine for black. OK, I got a nice battery on this. You know, line. I'm in a castle. I got c5 in. Um, this, you know, I got good control over all these light squares here. Um, so this line would be just fine for black. This is, you know, very nice position for black. Nothing to worry about. Uh, so that's why, since white had no advantage in that line, they've begun to play the move knight to e4. So this is your best try to get an advantage if this is uh, how you're playing here as white. OK, and we can take and we can take here. And now things get interesting, um, because very often white can just castle, offering this pawn. And so we'll, we'll look at that. If, however, you take here, seems normal enough. Um, I still want to play c5. So after some normal moves we develop, I can protect my bishop and uh, play a move like c5. So if this sort of thing happens, then I, I achieved my goal. I got c5 in. So in a position like this, black would be doing just fine. Um, let's see. So instead, castles. And in this position, I do want to look at a game. And we'll even flip it just for fun. Um, 
a very interesting game. So this is the, the main focus of this lecture tonight. This is the game Carlson Aronian from Bilbao, 2008. And in this game, okay, after one developing move, you know, okay, your bishop went back. Uh, Aronian got a little greedy. He decides to take it. You know, why not? I'll take it. Um, you know, I'm a grandmaster. I, I'm up a pawn. Everything's great. So black played a5. Okay, very, very nice move. And now white has actually played a move. So Carlson, uh, that's okay, never been played before or since. Uh, mostly because people don't take this pawn, so you don't see this a lot at the high level. But here he played a fantastic move. So <laughs> this one move is what the whole lecture is all about. Uh, it's all been leading up to this, this moment. So I do want to, at home you may want to pause, try to see if you can play like Carlson in this position. So you're ahead in development, you're castled, black is not. How did Carlson exploit these factors and uh, make good use here of, of his initiative? How did he... How do you do it? <laughs> D5. D5. Yeah, this is the kind of move that you may think about, but how many of us would actually play it? Um, a fantastic move, you know, putting a pawn where it can be taken four different ways, uh, which is <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I think I've seen this. You've seen this one? Yeah, I've seen this one like right. But, you know, you are trying to get these bishops into the game, and you're going to try to cause some disturbances. So let's actually have a look at all four moves. In the game, he took with his knight, which is a fine move. Um, perhaps the easiest to refute is taking here. So there's a couple of them that we can, we can just get rid of, and this is one of them. Do we know what uh, white would play in this position? Yeah? Bishop b5 check. Bishop b5 check, yeah. And so again, we see what happens when this bishop is on this diagonal sometimes. Uh, we do have to be worried about this sort of a check. Here, king e7 doesn't really work because, okay, he has other bishops and other pieces attacking me. Um, so you'd have to play a move like this, and then knight e5, yeah. Okay, even if you defend, I can play like rook c1 and take your bishop and then take your knight, or I can play queen f3 or any number of really good moves. This, okay, this obviously has been a, a complete disaster here for black. So taking with the C pawn, okay, that one, that one's right out. This one is a little less obvious. Um, okay, positionally, maybe I, I got, I got hanging pawns. Maybe not a very good version of them, but um, okay. Uh, how are you going to take advantage of that? Well, one way would be to play knight d4, and we're going to start getting pressure on c6. And um, here, I think I don't know if it's necessarily the best move. But I think the trickiest move is the move knight to f5. Uh, so I don't know. This, this could all have been prepped by Carlson. So who knows what he would have played. Maybe he would have played rook c1. Or who knows what he had prepared. Um, but this is the trickiest because you have to play king f8 or g6, which you don't want to play either of those moves as black. Because if you castle, it's already over. You have the very strong move, knight takes g7. The point being, if you take, now you've entered this pin. And yeah, you're going to see these bishops and my queen coming to get you. Um, so something like this would be just game over. Because um, I'm winning this and checkmating you. And you know, so too many bad things are happening. Uh, I think you can play d4, and then maybe you can give up your queen. Maybe that would keep you alive for a, a minute. Um, but OK, so that would be an obvious disaster. So OK, black would have to play something different, king f8. or uh, um, So maybe that's not so palatable. We don't want to play that way. Taking with the queen is, is OK. This is not such a bad move. Um, we sh we'll do some combination here as white of queen e2, 95, bringing our rooks in really fast. Um, but black actually could have an OK position in a line like this. We'll just show it rather briefly. This is sort of um, how this line might go. And OK, you know, black is up a pawn. Uh, still, white has a lot of attacking potential. So this is a very interesting position. So this way was, was actually a quite interesting way to take. His way to take was also fine. And in this game, even though we, we sacked a pawn here with white, 
he doesn't immediately, you know, get some awesome winning tactic that would, you know, really make the game amazing. But he just slowly develops lots of pressure. And in this position, okay, he goes after c6, and then black decides just to, to give it to him. You get a position like this where, again, um, okay, we can't play here because of the rook hanging. You have to play a move like king e7, and okay, we've seen in a lot of these lines, that's maybe not such a bad deal because here, you know, this, the bishop is on this side, so there's not really any good chance of attacking the king with the bishop from here, so, and maybe this is fine. Maybe you can play this way as black. Obviously, it's a little scary, <laughs> um, but I don't know, with best play, maybe this, this should be fine. All right, attacks the queen, and we'll just go a couple moves just to show the, the amazing finish. Um, okay, and here, yeah. So in, what white has really is just some long-term compensation in the fact that his pieces are always going to be active. And, um, let's see. Yeah, so I think this here was a mistake. Okay, so now black is doing stuff in the center, and that's where his king is. Rook takes on b4. Yeah, this is what was played. Um, but yeah, now it's pretty scary for the black king. But here, too, he played a, a great move. So I think this also would be... I think it's really challenging. If you play this move, then you're winning, winning, winning. But I, I, again, and you must have seen this already, I don't think that it's entirely the easiest thing to play. Um, so pause your videos at home. I'll give the audience a chance here. What's the best move here? Carlson did find it. He did. He did. It was a very good move. Perhaps not an, an obvious one. <laughs> Rook d6. Um, it's interesting, but I'll take it. <laughs> Is there? Did you have more to it than this? No. No. Just guessing. Just guessing. Yeah, just give your rook away. So Carlson didn't just give his rook away. Um, he didn't give his queen away. You know. <laughs> um, Yeah, right. if it's a good move and you're not giving your pieces away, what chance do you have to find it? Um, yeah, and those can be the hardest moves to find in chess when it's not some sacrifice, it's just some really good move. And once you see it, you'll say, oh, yeah, that's a really good move. Um, but yeah, finding it is, is not so easy, so I, I do want to... We got a lot of firepower on this side of the room, so hopefully we can, we can come up with it. e4. Um, so at minimum, I can trade the rooks first. And you lose the bishop. Well, yeah, if here, maybe here's good. <laughs> maybe. So, okay, I don't think I can take the bishop, but maybe I can, I can defend a little better like this. Um, I'm trying to keep control over d6. I think you can do better than this. But yeah, e4 is interesting. G4. G4. That's the craziest move you could play. <laughs> okay, you want to open that side of the board? Fine. How do you want to take it? <laughs> what? All right, well, I'm still going to take this first. You're going to take back, presumably. Who knows what you'd play? I'll let you pick because you're going to play something ridiculous. No, 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 this is not the way forward. This is. Queen c6. Queen c6. Okay. Right, this is a very tempting move. But I think after king f5, I'm actually running away. That's where I want to go. I, I get that f5 is not the dream square. But uh, that is the general direction that I want to go. So here, I, this is actually fine. But it's, it's obviously a tempting move. But you can do better. Uh, so hopefully you guys found it at home. In this position, Carlson played. Mm-hmm. 
You want to play bishop d5? I take it. Uh, well, or with the rook. Which way do I want to take it? No good? Okay. Yes, yeah, so we did find the best move here. You don't care about that taking the pawn? No. So, yeah, in a position like this, and I, I, there might actually already be some tactics here. Um, looking at. Yeah. But at home, they still don't know yet. Um, so, the problem with taking a pawn like this is it doesn't really have anything to do with um, attacking the king. And a pawn is not the most important feature in this position. It's you know how weak the king is. Because here I can actually trade. And then now I think I can take here. Because if you check me, I, I run away. So I mean, something like this I think is, is fine. I think I want a piece. Um, it's still scary to be black. But the pawn is, is really not important in a position like this because okay, this guy is getting attacked. And there's all these tactical liabilities. Um, and so, yeah, he did play the move Claudio came up with. This was the hint that I hope helped people. Uh, rook to a1. Rook to a1. And the rook can come into the game <laughs> a couple different ways. And OK, now the position is just crushing, because if I play rook a6, <laughs> then I like my chances. So he defended. Um, OK. But now he decides just to win some stuff. And here he wins stuff. OK. And so they traded. And now he went on to win. And now it's just a simple technical task if you're you know, Magnus Carlsen, um, who for us is right now playing in the World Championship. And that third round game might still be going on, because they were, they're going to play that forever. Do you know what happened? They know what happened. They knew like weeks and weeks ago. Because this is never going out. This will be out in like a month. Um, but anyway, that's the, the game here that was played. OK, a fantastic idea. And OK, let's just, let's just take one last look and, and marvel at, at the brilliance here. Um, it all comes back to this. OK, I'm, I'm down a pawn, so I need to get even more activity. And to sacrifice a pawn in such dramatic fashion, you, know, you can take it a thousand ways. But uh, white in every line gets some sort of compensation for the pawn. Uh, was it just a truly fantastic idea. And it can show you what can go wrong if you're black and you try to get too greedy in these types of lines. So hopefully that gives you an introduction to some of the, the sidelines in the modern Moran. Next week, we will be covering the main line in this position, which is to castle. So for that, come back next week. Uh, Go ahead, hit like, share, subscribe, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week.